This is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. They have a good friend with me, Paul Nissan, who's also been into the raw foods diet. Specifically, he got into it like I did for my health, to regain his health from his health condition. Paul, what health condition did you have that you uh, got over with the plant-based raw diet? Well, it wasn't a health condition. It was a disease condition. <laughs> I had inflammatory bowel disease, also known as ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. And I didn't know much about diet until I found Hippocrates Health Institute, and they told me to eat a raw diet. My doctor said, don't eat a raw diet. and my doctor's stuff wasn't working, so I listened to Hippocrates and I got better. It's awesome, man. So, you know, I know you have many books. I mean, how many books have you written already? Eight books. Wow, eight books. That's eight more than I got, and we've been doing this about the same amount of time. So anyways, Paul's like, I know one of your books is actually called The Daylight Diet, which I want to talk about. Now, while I'm on the midnight diet, or that's what Paul likes to say, I'm on the midnight diet, because I'll eat late, but I tend to eat only a few meals during the day. I don't like eat, you know, a little bit like here, a little bit there. I mean, I might eat a couple big meals. So what do you recommend that a person does in their in their diet? Well, it comes down to making adjustments. And I have three stages to the daylight diet. And the first stage would be eat as much as you need to in a day so you get out of the habit of eating late at night. So that actually might be overeating for somebody. But if that's going to break their habit of being hungry or habit hunger late at night, then that's okay. Then the second stage would still be eat as much as you can, but limit it to between the hours of, let's say, 9 and 5. And so you're not hungry after like five. If you're eating enough in a day, you won't be. And once you break that habit. And then finally, I don't think anyone needs to, if they're eating good quality food, needs to eat more than three times a day. And ultimately, that's what we want to get. We're eating three times a day, and we're not eating late at night. Well, I definitely would agree with Paul. You know, I mean, I, I'm a, in the city of Las Vegas at present time, and you know, many people in Vegas have that swing shift where they work in the midnight shift. So somebody on that, what are they gonna like eat when they're sleeping? So what I recommend in that case is, you know, whatever your waking hours are, and we should probably be really be up in the daylight hours and actually be sleeping at night, but some people do their job or whatever, they gotta do it another way. You know, then I recommend that the waking hours, try to eat a minimal amount of times during that time and getting a nice long period of time when you are sleeping or resting and just simply not eating. Would you agree with that, Paul? Well, there's one thing I think from a health standpoint that's worse than eating late at night, and that's working late at night. <laughs> and it's something that I've had to break that habit because it's just, it's something, a habit we could fall into, but it's just not the way we were designed. We're not nocturnal animals. But I do get a question often, well, what do we do if we do have a night job? How should we eat? And I tell people, uh, first of all, don't eat like you would in the daytime throughout the day. Try to eat maybe two times a day if you have to be eating on that schedule. And try to eat as close as possible to sunrise and sunset. So if you are working at night, going in at midnight, if you eat maybe 9 p.m. and you eat your second meal at 4 a.m., that's better than eating at 2 in the morning or so on. So you want to eat as close as to when the sun went down or when the sun rises as possible and not right in the middle of the night. And reason being is the, the moon and cleansing work together and digestion and the, and the sun works together. But when you're eating right in the middle of the night at a time when the body should be cleansing the most, it does throw things off. So you definitely want to avoid, even if you're working a late night shift, eating right in the middle of the night. Right, so I definitely would agree with the, the daylight diet principles, although in my life with my busy schedule and doing everything, it's not always happening like that. So, you know, I try to make this work for me and take what I can from it, and I definitely agree with some of the points. So like for me personally, I'll wake up in the morning and pretty much upon waking, I'm not eating breakfast because that's breaking our fast. In general, I'll just drink some water, maybe like 32 ounces of water, stay hydrated, and then I'll work for a bunch, maybe do some exercise, and then maybe like, you know, mid-morning, when I feel the urge and I feel hungry, I'll actually eat. And I think it's very important to actually listen to our body and don't just eat at 8 a.m. because that's when you're supposed to eat breakfast or eat at noon because that's when you're supposed to eat lunch. Like, what do you think about that, Paul? Well, I used to believe that, but I disagree because I, I used to tell people just eat whenever you feel hungry. But because of habit, people always feel like they're in the mood for food. Whenever somebody's bored, they look for food. And they'll use an excuse while I'm hungry. Well, you might be desiring food, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're hungry. I think it is good to schedule our meals and we get to know our bodies and we know our own schedule. So if somebody's going to eat three times a day, once you get used to eating enough in one meal where you know you're not going to be hungry till the next meal, then you could do it and you could, and even planning out your meals. I used to say, well, this, whatever's available, try to get the best thing available. But the more we plan, the more we're going to be successful at whatever our goal is. So yes, if we're hungry or if we're really in the mood for food, not just because I have it, but we really need food we can break that that strict schedule but to do that on a daily basis because of so many people's lack of discipline out there they'll just use that as an excuse to just eat all the time like if i tell people just eat when you're hungry 
it'd be almost impossible for somebody not to eat at nighttime because of habit hunger. When they're sitting in front of the TV, they just want to eat. But if you schedule yourself and say, look, just stop eating, let's say six o'clock in the summertime and maybe five o'clock in the wintertime, well, people can get in a habit. And really to break a habit is, and to, to form a habit is one word, consistency. As long as you're consistent at it, then it's gonna be great. And I travel a lot, I have a busy schedule, and it hasn't always been, be, been easy, but I've maintained the consistency of not eating late at night. And I try to, in the summertime when the days are longer, that's not an excuse for me to be able to eat at nine o'clock at night because it's light outside. I still try to stop eating earlier, but I might eat an extra meal in the summertime because the food is lighter that I'm eating. The winter time, the food's heavier, so I find myself eating less and I balance it out fine and people say, wow, in the winter time, the sun goes down at four o'clock, so what are we supposed to stop doing, eating at four o'clock? Yeah, because in the winter time, I, go to, I don't know about you, but I go to sleep earlier in the winter time. The nights are, are longer, I go to sleep earlier. And if I go to sleep early, I want to stop eating earlier. And I don't have an issue with it. I'm very active, I'm very fit, and I don't have any issue with it. Now, the only issue is if somebody has, if they're pregnant or breastfeeding or has type 1 diabetes or any condition, health condition, the information I'm giving here is for the, the average person that's looking to improve their health. If somebody already has a pre-existing condition, I won't say check with your doctor, I'll say check with somebody who knows about that condition before you make any changes. I definitely agree with Paul on that one. Now, I also want to address really quick the, you know, habit hunger like Paul was talking about and true hunger. For me personally, after living on the plant-based raw diet for the last 18 years, I mean, I think I have a pretty good sense of habit hunger versus true hunger. Like right now, I'm looking at the greens over there and I'm salivating and I'm feeling the hunger in my mouth. And for me, and that's my sign for me, that that's true hunger. Like I am really hungry because this morning I only had 10 mangoes and that was a couple hours ago and I've already burned through those and I'm actually really hungry. But everybody needs to check in with them to see if they're actually having the habit hunger, which, you know, on occasion I still do, or that true hunger to eat at the appropriate times. I mean, what you're hearing from both Paul and me may be conflicting, but, you know, we all have the same message, which is, you know, you need to find out the thing that works for you. This is what he's learned and what he teaches. And, you know, I teach a little bit different. Is one person right, one person wrong? Absolutely not. There's so many different ways to do things in, in the world, and we need, each need to find, you know, our own ideals and what works the best for us. Uh, you know, so the next thing is, you know, uh, my, my lunch, I eat a standard lunch, and sometimes this is a juice, a smoothie, or a salad, or some more fruit, and, you know, and then I have my dinner, which is usually the heaviest uh, meal for me in the day. Now, I want to flop that and actually start eating heavier in the middle of the day versus in the morning when I'm still breaking my fast or before I'm going to bed. In general, I recommend it on the daylight diet, you know, you would eat your, your amount of calories or the food in the, in the middle of the day so that you're not eating late at night. And I definitely would agree that's probably actually best because when we're, when we're sleeping, we don't want to be digesting food, we want to be healing. So at night, you know, my goal is to eat lighter meals, including maybe juices or fruits, instead of a nice heavy salad with, you know, a, a nut-based dressing. So Paul, would you agree with this? And what are some tips so that people can eat lighter in the evening? Well, I met a, a man yesterday I was speaking to actually on my radio show, and he said he would love to give up eating animal meat, but he needs the protein and he can't see himself living without animal meat. And I said, well, I once thought that way, and I used to eat a lot of animal meat many years ago before I got into the raw diet. But I not only did I realize that I could do okay on a raw food diet, a vegetarian diet, but I realized that there's just as much protein and there's better quality protein on a vegetarian diet. But before, when I didn't know that, what can I say? So I told the man this, that you know I once thought that way, and he just can't see living without animal meat. Well, when I tell people the way I eat, they go, there's no way I can see not eating late at night, or there's no way I can see doing this. When you're not doing it, I know it sounds kind of like almost impossible to do or ridiculous to even say, but try it, you know, get in the habit of doing it and see if it's working for you. That's ultimately, we are individuals. We gotta see what works best for us. But most people will confirm that know about health, that eating before going to sleep and eating late at night, a heavy meal is not the best way to do it. As for me, I can give you an example of what I ate today. And as I say in my videos on my channel, it changes, it's changed from last year and a year before. But today I got up about 5 a.m. and uh, around 8.30 a.m. I had a smoothie that had several bananas in it and, and, and some blueberries and some other berries in it. So I had this big smoothie. And I, had, I, I usually would have a little nuts after that, maybe right when I'm, right after that smoothie. I didn't have any today, some nuts. And then for lunch I'm gonna have a, a, a head of kale and a couple of avocados. And then this evening I'll have a, not too late, I'll have an almond milk and I might put some fruit in there and that's pretty much it for me today. I might, sometimes I don't have that almond milk, I might have a coconut if I have a coconut available. 
So that's the way I do it. I make sure I get my greens every day and I try to keep my heaviest meal in the middle of the day. So that's the way I like to do it. Well, I definitely agree with keeping them, uh, you know, the heaviest meal in the middle of the day because that way you're not burning with it before you go to bed or you're not burning with it when you're breaking your fast and having the breakfast. So, Paul, I want to get more into like, you know, because some of the times or some of the things I've heard where people are trying to like do the daylight diet, you know, because some of the water rich foods like you advocate eating like the fruits and vegetables are high in water content and don't have a lot of calories. It might be more difficult for some people, especially in the wintertime, depending on where you live with the short, you know, hours in the day to get enough calories from fruits and vegetables and you said you mentioned some nuts and avocados to get some some you know some calories in it because we do subsist on you know calories but also we need nutrition you know uh, what percentage of like you know uh, calories from fat do you recommend on on your on your diet on the daylight diet to be able to meet your caloric needs and hopefully not eat enough not eat too much fat well as we get to learn our body we first realize the cleaner we get or the healthier we get the less we actually need to eat including calorie wise but we still need calories for energy I personally don't count calories. I know when I need more food. And whether I'm eating that day just fruit or if I'm eating nuts that day, I know I need more and I'll just eat more when I'm eating my meal of what I'm eating to try to get what I need. I've never ran into a problem where I just had no energy to do anything, so I know I'm getting enough for me. I know a lot of people doing the raw food diet and that no one eats the same exact amount. They might have the same philosophy of eating some people more fruit or some people more fats, but as for the amount, they have there's so many different variables, where they live, their, their lifestyle, and so on. If somebody's very active, I know on active days, I might let myself have more food so I don't fall into that danger zone. And it depends. Some days, if I can get a good quality produce, some avocados, and I know I'm gonna be eating that, I might be able to eat a little bit less of the other foods. So I try to just think about the whole thing, and that's what's so wonderful about this. Our bodies and our diet plan is, we're figuring it out for us not for others. It's a good idea as a starting point to read some books and guides, but still ultimately you got to look at what's best for you. So I don't count calories. I haven't counted calories in a long time, uh, but I just know from knowing my body when I need more food and I'll just eat more food when I'm eating that particular meal. Sometimes, some days I might get away with more fruit and, and sometimes not. There's no one day for me where this day I'm eating 30% fat and 70% fruit or vice versa. I don't take it by that. I probably know two days the same. I just make sure I'm eating a scheduled on, on during my meal time the best I can. And it's a little challenging when you travel, but we make the best of it and we enjoy it. Right, so you know, I wanna give people that starting point. You, you recommend them to read some books, but I always like to just put it down. I mean, there's some raw food programs out there that recommends 80, 10, 10. Now, do I eat 80, 10, 10? You know, on a rare day I do, but in general I like to say, you know, the majority of my calories come from carbs. Carbohydrates is the majority. Usually my protein is probably right around 10%, plus or minus, and then the, the fat is variable. So my fat intake varies from 10% when I'm eating no averts all the way up to 25%. On a rare day, normally it falls between 15 and 20% because I track this. So this gives people like a reference range you know, that they might want to experiment with, you know, no more than 25% of calories from fat. I think more calories from fat than that, in my opinion, um, you know, are not healthy. So that would mean that I'm, if I'm always 10% protein, then, you know, I would get a little bit less carbs that day. So I know you must have calculated for, for the diet you're on, and can you give uh, my viewers today a range? And I know it might be a wide range, but at least it'll give them some idea on where they should you know, experiment with and try. Well, we're talking about a starting point here. We're not talking about what somebody's gonna be doing for the next 20 years. We're talking about a starting point. And for a starting point, I think we just need to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables in our diet and not focus on the fats and the carbohydrates and the sugars. I think that actually scares people or makes it more complicated than it has to be. I'm not talking about processed raw food. When I say live foods, if somebody just eats live foods, whether it is a lot of fat or a lot of sugar or a lot of something, just get it in your body, get that in your body, and you'll figure out what's best for you, how much you need. Never once did I pick out a calculator and say, this is how much I had today, or that's how much I had today. I mean, realistically, I do know, because before I used to do this, before I even got into this diet, I probably eat anywhere between 1,700 and 2,000 calories a day. There are some days I can get by on a lot less, 14, 1,500 calories. Very rarely do I see myself going over 200 calories on the average day. As amount of, the amount of the percent, I, I don't eat much fat. I mean, I, I have avocados or coconuts might be my two major things, uh, but I don't eat much fat. I, I make sure I get a green every day, and I make sure I get a good amount of fruit, but I don't overdo it. I mean, I to be honest, I couldn't eat 10 mangoes. 
I just can't. I wouldn't feel good. And I, I, I can't eat 10 avocados either. Uh, the most, about 10 bananas? Uh, you know what? I, I've had smoothies where if I had maybe four bananas in there, and I might have had a banana or two throughout the day. So I've had up to six or seven bananas throughout the day, but not in one meal. So I could certainly get 10 bananas in one whole day, but not in, in one meal. But very rarely would I even desire that many bananas, unless it was in a smoothie, and the smoothie was amazing, and I didn't know how many were in there. But on average, when we make our smoothie, and you can see them on my channel, uh, for me, my wife, and my two babies, and while well, one baby is not eating yet, so me and my wife and baby, I might put in there, let's say, five or six bananas. Uh, of course, some other berries, and sometimes I'll try to put some coconut in there or something else, and blend that up, and we'll split that between three of us. I mean, I might have a little bit more than then, so maybe I'm getting three, four bananas, uh, but, you know, I, I, not, ten, not ten mangoes for me. I'm not saying you're wrong for doing that. I just, I know I wouldn't feel good doing that. I mean, I, I definitely agree. I mean, I'm on my plan, Paul's on his plan. Obviously, they're both working for each of us, and you need to find out the plan for you. And I mean, this video is to basically give you guys some, you know, some differences, because, you know, there's like raw food leaders that teach like, my way is the best way, you gotta do it this way. If you're not doing it right, eat more calories. You know, in my opinion, you know, that may not be the best idea for everyone. So, you know, we're sitting here giving you guys options on what works for the, each of us. And we each have, as you heard, very different diets. And, you know, um, let's see, Paul. So, like, the thing that I have is that, you know, I eat, I eat the majority of my calories in fruit. I, my goal every day is to eat two pounds of leafy greens. Can you say, like, how many pounds of leafy greens you eat or how many pounds of fruit you eat a day? Uh, no, when I eat my greens, I usually just buy a head of kale in the store and just eat that there's different varieties of kale or spinach i mean i don't love to do it but sometimes i'll get the pre-washed greens that's not ideal but i'll just eat a bucket of those like a pound uh if it's a pound i don't know if it's a pound or not it's just one of those buckets of the of, large one or the, the small one not the real large one but the, the smaller one i guess it could be a five or a 12 ounce not the bad the the, the, the plastic yeah. packet uh but for the most part I, I had a kale and sometimes a kale that's bigger than uh, others uh it, the wrapped kale sometimes it's bigger we got some now that's not as big uh, so that's the way I usually do it so I don't really weigh it or count I just buy, grab some of that and mostly when I eat my greens that's what I'll do it's just the kale or even uh, some spinach I'll get and eat that and uh, every now and then I'll make a salad and I'll put a lot of dressing over the salad and make a really really nice salad as a matter of fact I made a salad uh, yesterday and it was really delicious yesterday afternoon um, but as for fruit it depends on the season. When black sapotes are in season, I mean, I really get a good amount of those and I could easily eat maybe five or six of those in one day if they're really good. And a papaya that day as well and, and my banana smoothie. So it depends on the day and what's available. But if there's good fruit available, I'll definitely enjoy a good amount of that. What I have found and changed over the years is I used to believe that we, sh because of food combining, we shouldn't mix a fat with a, with a sugar. Uh, but I, I've come to have a little different opinion about that, especially in a smoothie. I feel I do much better when I add a little bit of fat, some coconut uh, meat to it or coconut cream to it. Uh, I, you know, they say it slows down the sugar rush. I definitely find it to be true. Now, it doesn't make sense food combining wise, but I definitely find it to be true and, uh, and digest just as well. And I just feel better when I do that. So you shared, you're just saying that you had a salad with a really good dressing. Will you share with my viewers what that dressing was? Well, I, I make a whole different varieties of dressings, and that's what I'm about when people don't like greens, because they're just greens. Well, it's very easy to make different types of dressings that can make just the average salad so different. I think the dressing I made yesterday was a pumpkin seed Caesar dressing with almonds and pumpkin seeds, lemon juice, garlic, and maybe some cayenne pepper. And I just blended that up with some water, I believe, and some salt. And that's pretty much what I had, and I just poured that over. Uh, the greens, some tomatoes, and some celery and cucumber, and that was pretty much it. All right, cool, Paul. So, I mean, I want to take away some of the confusion, and, you know, based on what I hear Paul saying, and this is just my opinion, of course, you know, based on the fruit that he's eating, that he's getting 1,600 to 2,000 calories a day, and he's eating some avocado and some nuts, you know, it's in my opinion that the, a lot of his calories are coming from the fats. So, you know, where I'm, my calories are coming mostly from the fruit, he's got a little bit higher percentage, and I don't know what that percentage is. He doesn't know either because he's not calculating it, but I'd say a little bit more calories from fat than my, than my meeting. Is that wrong? Is it bad? I mean, there's programs like Hippocrates and Gabriel Cousins that promotes a higher, you know, fat diet than higher carb diet. Now, is that right or wrong? Well, you know, once again, it depends on the person and where you're at. Paul, do you have any comments about that? 
of the few times I did actually think about how many calories I was eating, I could say it never went over 2,000. And I want to stress that, you know, I'm not saying people get over 2,000, it's bad for them. Uh, as I said, that might be the highest I go. I can't say every day I'm eating 1,800 or 2,000 calories. Like I said, a lot of days is a lot less. And some of those days, like I said, bananas, I'm eating some bananas, and uh, sometimes the banana smoothie alone is giving me a good amount. I, I don't know. I can't say. I haven't, I haven't sat down. And one of the reasons why I don't like to make videos like this is because people can speculate and say, well, he's eating 50% fat or 70% fat. Well, maybe for that day. But they haven't waited out over a week or a month or even a year. And I definitely would say that if you wait out like that, Yes, there's, there's avocados has fat, and yes, there's fat and coconut, coconut meat. Those are my two sources of fat. Uh, for the most part, I don't eat, you know, if I have them available, like I have coconuts now, and I can find a good avocado, that's wonderful. There are some times I don't, I go without that at all. I do have my almond milk, uh, and I guess that's a nut. It's a little... You snack on some nuts occasionally, uh, I saw you. Well, the nuts I have is, is really my, part, should be part of my, after my salad. What I do is every day I like to eat a salad, and then after that, have my treat, whether it's nuts, or if I have my smoothie in the morning, have some nuts, and that would be ideally the best, but I, I don't eat, I, I eat a good amount of nuts in dressings and almond milks, uh, and... I can't say, I, I would disagree with you. I wouldn't say the, the, the percentage of it is mostly from fat because there are days where I eat mostly more, more fruit than fat. So I think on an individual day, I'd have to look at it. So, uh, But I, I don't have any problem with somebody if they get the majority of the calories from fat, as long as they're raw fats. I don't have an issue with that, and I know people that thrive doing that. All I know is what I'm doing is working well for me. Right, and once again, I want to stress the importance of you know what we're doing for each of us, although it's so different. And you know, I'm not gonna say Paul's wrong or I'm right, or you know, it just doesn't matter. What each of us are doing is right for us. And you know, we each agree, both of us, me and Paul agree that you need to find out what's gonna work best for you. And the only way to find this out is not to listen to people on YouTube, not to read books, but to try it for yourself. Try low fat days, try high fat days, try some of the you know things that Paul's doing, try some of the stuff I'm doing, try some of the stuff other YouTubers are doing and see which one you feel the best at. Now you, you I want to stress to the viewers here, you're eating 10 mangoes today, but one of the reasons why is you came here and, and you're getting a, a fruit that's not available where you live too often. So you, you're eating, I won't say more than normal, but I mean, would you recommend or say that you eat 10 mangoes or 10 pieces of fruit a day every single day? So it depends on the fruit, Paul. So yes, like Paul says, I'm visiting South Florida. I found an amazing organic mango farm that grows like 50 varieties of mangoes. I mean, normally you guys might get the, you know, some Haydens and some, you know, uh, champagne mangoes and some maybe some Keats and some other kinds, uh, the Kents, the popular ones. And that's like three varieties, but they're growing 50 here. It's early season. I got 10 different distinct varieties. Each one tastes totally different. I found that I like the more East Indian varieties that are like the Adolfo kidney bean shape. Those things are out of this world. My favorite one, you'll actually see it in another video. It's actually called lemon meringue mango. To me, they're amazing. Paul doesn't particularly care for them, but to me, I'm like, oh my God, this is the best mango on the earth. And because I'm here and I bought 50 pounds to get the deal, I had to buy 50 pounds and lower the price down 50 cents a pound. So that saved me 25 bucks. And uh, you know, here in South Florida, it's organic food is expensive, especially stuff that's been shipped in, and I like to eat local wherever I'm at. I bought 50 pounds of mangoes that's lasting me not quite a week. So I've been really pounding the mangoes, pretty much eating mono meals of mangoes for some cases, lunch and dinner, and pretty much skipping a breakfast. And you know, I've been pretty good. So yes, I'm absolutely uh, inordinately eating a large variety of calories from fruit this trip. So this is a trip where it's you know closer to that 10% fat. But when I get back home, I'm gonna get back to my regular program and you know, some days I actually do eat 10 plus pieces of fruit. Actually, most days, depending on what fruit it is. I mean, I could be eating a nice large papaya and I won't be eating 10 papayas that day. I might eat a nice large watermelon, you know, and I'm not eating 10 pieces that day, but I'll eat the smaller fruits, absolutely, to get my calories. I mean, I'll juice 10 oranges easily, drink the orange juice or blend it into a smoothie or blend that into a dressing, you know, for my evening salad. So yes, every day is absolutely different and don't base your diet on eating, oh, John's eating 10 mangoes a day, you know, don't do that. I do that some days if I'm back home and I got the crappy mangoes, it's hard for me to actually get over like six mangoes because they just don't taste that good. These ones, it's like, it's hard not to overeat them actually because they are that good. But I'll eat until I'm just about full and maybe like one more. So I might be overeating just a little bit, but.
for it's meeting my requirements for what I need and for to make me feel good. Uh, I do have to say that I, I know a man named Fred Vichy who's been eating a raw diet for over 50 years, and he used to meet a lot of natural hygienists in the old days. And one of them was Bob Gross, and uh, they, they were on his kick of just eating a lot of fruit, and they would consider 10 mangoes a lot of fruit. And some people can get away with it, but there is a school of thought, like Hippocrates Health Institute would say, that it's not healthy, especially for somebody already, already with an existing condition. Uh, so John doesn't have an existing condition right now, but some people say it can even lead to one, candida or so on. So again, we need to stress that what we're doing is for us, I don't expect or ask any of you to eat the way we eat right now. If I would eat like Dr. Fred Bishy, who's been eating a raw diet many, much longer than I have, that wouldn't be best for me. We have to work to what's best for us. Tell me about your fitness activity level, because some people might not think, oh, Paul doesn't eat enough calories for his fitness activity level, or he's just sitting on his computer all day. I mean, are you active? Are you fit? I mean, what, what's up? Well, I got to laugh. It's like a, 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 somebody eats meat looking at a vegan and saying, no, there's no way they can exist on that diet. Well, that's how somebody that's eating a lot of fruit or somebody that's running marathons might look at somebody that eats a little bit more fat and say, well, there's no way somebody could do it that way and be active. I'm very active and, I, and, and you know, it's working for me and people have to do what works for them and I think it's very important to stay active uh, at this uh, diet and lifestyle in general, to be outside and I had Dr. Koifman and his son, uh, Dr. Koifman has been eating a raw diet for a long time, go to koifmancenter.com and they came here and I was sitting on my computer more than I would like to and they would go out every day for a walk and they said you need to get out more and I agree 100%. I will do a lot of exercise inside the house, but just getting out more made a big difference. But for years, I love riding my bike. I love running. I love especially running on the beach. I did work out in the gym for many, many years, but I stopped doing naps. I didn't want to be inside a gym, so I'll do uh, nice exercises on the beach and so on. But uh, as for me, one of my things that I, I, I'm passionate about is being fit and being into fitness. And even before I got into the raw diet, that's where I was at. So whether it's... Uh, cardiovascular exercises or whether it's lifting weights it's always been my passion and something I make sure the diet I'm eating helps me maintain that level of fitness and no I'm not running a marathon every day and I actually think those ultra marathons and things like that are actually doing more harm than good to the body uh, but I, I am more fit than the average person and I enjoy fitness and I think it's important I think not enough people eating the raw food diet don't do that enough now what I see is a problem is I see people uh, very too sedentary on, on this type of diet. And if you are eating a lot of fruit and a lot of sugar, I think it's important to make sure you're burning what mm -hmm. you're taking in. Yeah. So you need to be fit. And it's one of the mistakes. But the, on the reverse of that, I see a lot of people eating, uh, you know, being fit so they can eat more. <laughs> and I don't think that's good either. I think we need to eat to get the nutrients we need and the pleasure we need to a degree. And we need to be fit. And they should match up together. We shouldn't do one to compensate the other. We should do them both equally and enjoy what we're doing. I definitely agree with Paul on that point. There's so many people that might be into a raw diet and they're eating like 4,000 to 6,000 calories a day. And if you're an ultra marathon runner or really into fitness and go out several hours a day to you know do that stuff because that's what you love, hey, more power to you. I would agree with Paul in general. I don't think that's the best thing to do, but if you want to do it, you could definitely do it and have the energy and excel and kick ass at doing it because you know eating a plant-based raw diet, in my opinion, is probably the best way to have the energy to do just that. So me also, I probably eat around on average 2,000 calories. Once again, like Paul, aside from a few times I've measured it just for fun to give a lecture or something. I don't care about my calories. I don't measure, but on average, I eat around 2,000, sometimes minus, sometimes plus. But I just I just eat till I'm happy. And this is for my activity level. You know, I like Paul, I'm you know at the computer a bunch, but I get out and garden a whole bunch. You know, I like to sprint a lot. You know, I'm not a marathon runner. I do like to bike and I like to rollerblade and rock climb and hike and get activity every single day because it is really that important and I encourage everybody to get some level of fitness some excess exercise depending on you know your activity level if you're older and you can't go out and run bike or walk do some swimming or just go out for a simple walk but some kind of exercise even like pedaling at your <laughs> when you're on the computer you know getting some movement sitting on a chi machine sitting on a vibrating plate something we need to move this body or you're gonna you're gonna lose it so the last question I have for you, Paul, today is, you know, uh, we, we've talked about how we've been doing this and we've each been doing this for, what, 18 years now around. 
And you know, so we've been on this program a long time and this is the diet that we have after 18 years. I know many of you guys might be doing it for maybe one year, maybe you've never even done it before and you're just looking and finding this video now. So you shouldn't just jump in and like, I'm gonna eat like John, I'm gonna eat like Paul today because this is like our transformation over the 18 years we've each collectively been doing it and we came up with a little bit different results. So what would be the number one tip, Paul, for people out there that are new into it or just getting into it a couple years to excel at their diet and uh, the raw foods that they're eating? Well, my number one tip would be, again, try not to eat too much processed food and, and raw junk food. Try to eat more live foods. There's a difference between raw and live, and we need to understand the difference. There's a difference between a raw food candy bar and a sprouted food, and we need to get more of those live foods into our body. So my number one tip would be, don't think about the calories, don't think about the percentages of anything at first. Just get as much live food in your body as possible, whether it's from salads or smoothies or juices. Get that in your body and you'll figure out the rest later on. And two things I've found for me personally over the years is when I first got into this, I used to really enjoy raw food restaurants. I cannot go to raw food restaurants anymore and enjoy them. I never, very rarely do I, can I eat there and feel good afterwards. And, and, but at first, when you're getting into this, enjoy the raw food restaurants. That, even now you can enjoy them. I'm not saying I never go. I do go, maybe once every couple of weeks, I'll go and I'll try to get a salad or something, but if I, I get into any of the recipes, I don't feel as good. I make the recipes for other people, but that's one thing I've found and you might find after doing this for a long time. The other thing is there's a lot of people out there, or not a lot, but more than ever before, exploring the raw food diet, and I find it amusing and also sad that people would get into it and say, well, I've been eating raw for a year or two years, and then like a year later they say, oh, I've been eating raw for like five or six years. And then like three years later, well, I've been raw 10 years. Uh, we must maintain integrity and honesty. And sad to say, not everybody out there is doing that. And I know the raw food diet and live foods uh, doesn't mess up your, your, your meth in addition because uh, <laughs> uh, we, we do it pretty well still. So we need to maintain our integrity and our honesty out there. Eat more live foods, get them in your body, eat something green every day, and don't eat late at night, and you'll be, you'll be on your way. All right, I mean, I definitely would agree with all Paul had to say on how to get started and how to do that to improve what you're doing, and I would say a similar message, you know, I end every one of my videos by saying eat more fruits and vegetables, and that's my message to you. Wherever you're at, whatever you're eating, hopefully you're getting rid of all the animal products and all the processed foods, in my opinion, those are some of the worst foods. Um, you know, Paul might disagree with me on some of that stuff, but you know, we would both agree that we need to eat more fruits and vegetables, focus on fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, as freshly grown as possible, whether you're growing them yourself, going to local farms, local farmers markets, CSAs, that's way better than buying things from the supermarket that have been shipped across the country, especially here in South Florida. Um, in addition, you know, if you can't just eat salads and eat apples, you know, then that's where juicing, blending, and uh, smoothies come in. They're really great, and also don't forget to use nature's best juicers and blenders your teeth. Make sure you chew your food really well into a mush like you would feed a baby as if it, you know, didn't have any teeth like it doesn't to get the optimal digestion. Besides diet, you know, for me raw foods is not just about the diet, it's also about the lifestyle. So it's very important for me to get enough sleep. Very critical. That's something you could change today without even changing your diet just by simply getting more sleep. How much more sleep did I say you should get? I have no idea. The rule of thumb that I go by is, you know, and Paul would say go to sleep when it's dark, wake up when it's light. You know, I'm a pretty busy person, so I go to bed whenever I get tired, and hopefully it's around the, the sunlight hours. That's my goal. I go to wet bed when I'm tired, and I don't wake up an alarm clock. I wake up whenever my body is fresh and invigorated and ready to get up in the morning, and that way I know I'm getting as much sleep as I need. Unfortunately, in our society today, most people wake up before they want to wake up with an alarm clock because they got to get to work. The final thing I want to say about the health thing is, you know, I like to say be at peace, be calm, you know, whether you want to do meditation, spiritual practice, you know, any kind of thing that will help, you know, uh, bring you omen under a tree or whatever it is, and we need to just relax. I mean, so much in our society is about stress. I got to get to work. I got to be there on time. I got to take the kids here. I got to do this. Got to take out the garden before it overflows. I mean, all kinds of stuff. You can do things in your life to, uh, you know, uh, de-stress your life so that you can be more at peace, which will also encourage the healing and also encourage your health besides just the food part of the diet. So uh, Paul, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, learn more about your work, uh, what, what are your websites so that my viewers could uh, check you out? I have many websites. My main website is www.healthwatchman.com. Healthwatchman.com. From there, you can go to my, my Bible, my health, my raw food, and every other video I have out there. It's all there.
All right, great, Paul. So uh, once again, I hope this uh, enlightened you about eating a plant-based raw diet, how to get healthy at it, how to do it, and how to experiment. Because in, me, in my opinion, this is all about experimenting and finding out what is right for you. Once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're the best.